Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, in today's video we are going to discuss um, setting up an API uh, from within Business Central and uh, we're then going to run through uh, one way in which we can consume that um, data that we uh, we expose via the API. So uh, this video is actually in response to one of the comments on uh, one of the previous videos that we've put up. So um, yeah, just thanks guys for, for continuously uh, watching the uh, the videos and keep the comments coming, keep the requests coming. I'll, uh, I'll get around to them as soon as I can. Um, and also guys, for the second part of this video, when we consume the data that we're going to set up in uh, in an API, uh, I'll be using Postman uh, and uh, just want to uh, say thanks to uh, two guys who helped me set up the uh, the Postman uh, collection that we're, we're going to use. So thanks to, to Jeeves and Daz. I won't say your surnames, but you guys know who you are. If you're watching, thanks very much for your help in uh, in setting that up, guys. Really appreciate it. Every day is a school day. Um, okay, so um, setting up uh, an API within Business Central. So uh, we're talking about the cloud version of Business Central here, guys. So uh, one of the first things that you'll need to do is set up an Entra application. Okay, so uh, that's set up in uh, the Azure portal. So I won't show you that on screen. Um, in this video and that's because we have things like client IDs and secrets and stuff in that area so I won't flash that up but it's really simple to go ahead and set that up guys there is uh, Microsoft Learn documentation on how to go ahead and set up those uh, Entra applications so uh, feel free to, to have a Google um, and uh, it is quite straightforward to, to set those up um, just one thing to remember, you may not necessarily have permissions to do that in your Azure portal. So it might be somebody else that you need to reach out to before um, you're able to set up that Entra application. Um, any issues you have, guys, just reach out. You know, I'm more than happy to help. Um, but essentially, once you've set up that Entra application, what we're going to do is come into Business Central and just use the search here to search for a page called Microsoft Entra Applications. So what is this page? Well, it's basically a list of all of the Entra apps which you've got linked to this particular business central environment, okay? So um, the one that we're gonna focus on today is Excel Data. You see, that's the only one that's enabled. It's the one that I set up in preparation for this video. Um, so one of the fields that you'll probably see on your own environment is the client ID field. It usually sits to the left of description. I've removed it from here because yeah, don't I don't want to be showing um, client IDs on uh, on YouTube videos. Okay, um, so let me go into the Excel data enter application card and again you will have a client id field here which sits above description if you haven't changed um, the, the page personalize the page like i have uh, but again i've uh, i've hidden that because i don't really want to be um, showing that on youtube so the client ID is the first most important field that you need to fill in on your Microsoft Entra application card when you set up a new one. Uh, and what is that client ID? Well, it's the client ID that belongs on the Entra app that you just set up in Azure portal. Okay, so in Azure portal, when you set up an Entra app, that app will have a client ID. And this is us within Business Central using the same client ID uh, to link BC to that Entra application. Okay, so once that's done, uh, we give our Entra app card uh, a description and here I've just called it Excel data. Uh, it will be in a disabled state by default um, and what I need to do is enable that once the setup is done. Um, and just as an FYI, what will happen is you'll get a prompt here around this username. So just take, I think, what you have in the description here and it will turn that into a user. OK, so processes uh, which consume this data will use this particular username. OK, um, so I guess, guys, on, on that description, just be careful there. You know, um, you may have tons of these set up in your environment, depending on how you're using BC. Um, but I guess you just want to make it sort of meaningful, right? So you just want to make sure that um, 
you understand what all these Entra application cards are if you have a few of them set up. So um, let's make the description something that, that is understandable and means something. So there's a few other fields that get filled in. We've got a user ID, we've got a username and a user telemetry ID, okay? Um, and then we also need to grant some permission sets here. Now, I, in this example, have just granted D365 Basic and D365 Business Full Access, but uh, it would be prudent to have a look at the permission sets and just consider what we're granting, because obviously this Entra application card setup is going to allow external sources to come into your BC and uh, and see potential bits of data that we're uh, that we're exposing. Okay, um, so you can't go ahead and give it super. Okay, so if I try to put super as a permission set in there, it's uh, it's telling me you can't assign super. You need to assign less permissions. Okay, and here, see in the error message, we get a similar note that says only give permissions based on the intended purpose of the app, right? So depending on how you guys work, you might want to split these out into uh, different applications that have different permission sets. And uh, you can see here, I've also got the extension area, which I can link uh, an app, an extension to one of my Entra application cards. Okay, so that's about all of the setup that I need to do on the Entra application card. Once that is done, I need to go ahead and say grant consent. So I've already done that for this one. Um, but what you need to be able to do, uh, what you need to do, sorry, is if, if you want to grant consent, you have to be an admin user. Okay. So you won't be able to do this. It just won't let you unless you're an admin user and you will need to log in as that admin user. Um, I'll just, I'll see if it allows me to do this again. So see here, it's uh, it's asking me to log in with an account. So if I go in with my user, it's telling me here that this is the user that's authenticating this permission. Um, and this, this these are the permissions that are requested. OK, so we've got Excel data and I can go in to see um, sort of information on the app using this link. And then it's given me a breakdown of all of the sort of stuff that this app might want to do. OK, um, and basically we need to accept this uh, this uh, permission request in order for us to consume the data from an external source. OK, uh, so it gives me gives me a message here. Consent was given successfully. I can just press OK. Now, I'm an admin user on this particular environment, guys, but just a heads up, you won't be able to do that, that consent. You won't be able to grant that consent unless you are an admin user. OK, so that's the setup that we need to do in Business Central to allow sort of um, sources to, to, to come in and see information, to pull information from our Business Central environment. Now, what do we actually want to, to, to expose via an API? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a record or show you a record that I previously added in to my web services page. OK, so all I did was I added my page number 22 here, which is a, a service name I've set as, uh, as customers. And that is basically just page number 22, which is my customers page within Business Central. OK, so really simple. I'm just um, going to look into Business Central and check out my list of customers. So obviously, depending on the type of integration that you're doing, it could be a lot more complex than this, right? You might have other things that you do as part of the integration process, but this is just to show you in principle what you would need to do um, and how that data could potentially be consumed. OK, so once you've had a think about the page that you might want to expose um, and look you can expose other things code units queries and so on as well it just depends on what you're doing as i mentioned guys uh, but once you've done that guys you can then go away and start consuming that data okay so in order to show you guys on this video what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up um, postman which is uh, an application that we can use to um, consume data from an API.
Okay, so full disclosure here, guys, I'm not a pro on um, on Postman, so I, I'm by far the best on this application, uh, which is why at the top of the video I mentioned um, the two guys that helped me out with this, and uh, I'll mention you guys again here. Jeeves, Daz, thank you very much for helping me set this up. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to learn. So essentially, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a URL here. So I'm going to do a post on um, this particular URL um, and I'm going to get a bearer token returned to me. OK, so this is basically us knocking at the door of my business central environment and we're saying, can you let me in? And when I say send, it basically gives me this very long bear a token which I'm going to go ahead and copy and then I've got another postman collection routine here in which my authentication type is bear a token and I'm going to pop my token in here okay so I'm just going to go paste in there now up here at the top you can see I've got a get and I am getting the API URL, which was my customers list, okay? So going back into Business Central here, where did I get that URL from? Well, it's my web services page, as I was on earlier, and it's the OData v4 URL here. So I literally just say copy link and pop that into my Postman get field here, okay? Now, when I go ahead and press send here, what that's going to do is it's going to use the bearer token and it's going to say, let me knock at the door. This is the information I want. And because we've got that bearer token, which we ran in the previous Postman collection, it will return the information down here. Now, forgive me, guys, I'm not the best on Postman. But um, if I scroll down here, guys, look, I've got my customer list from Business Central. OK, so I've got my uh, my customer number my customer name, I've got some other fields here which you may recognize from Business Central, okay? So if I keep scrolling down here, I've got customer number 20,000, Trey Research, and again, I'll scroll down, I've got customer number 30,000, School of Fine Arts. So I won't scroll down all the way to the end there, guys, but this is basically um, just uh, showing you that we can consume that API which we set up within Business Central, um, and we can very simply pull back uh, a list of customers based on the customer list page that I exposed. OK, so obviously you you can use Postman to test um, your, your sort of API, but you would essentially consume that API from another system. Could be, I don't know, something like a, a CE CRM system. Uh, it could be anything. Right. But um, it's just to show you in principle how to pull back that information. OK, um, so that is everything that I wanted to run through in this video. Thanks uh, very much for watching, guys. I hope it was useful and uh, I'll see you on the next one.